<clears throat> Thank you, Eric. Thank you, um, Don Benami, and all the board members, the officers, the staff of JNF, Kakal. Welcome to Javier Knesset and opposition head Yitzhak Buji Herzog. Special welcome to Iowa Governor Kimberly Reynolds and her delegation. I'd like to welcome all the government officials who are here. The Israeli Fire and Rescue Services Commissioner, David Simchi. Welcome, of course, to all the U.S. first responders who are visiting. I'd like to welcome all of the others who were identified uh, in detail by Eric in his opening remarks. And of course, we recognize with great sympathy the presence of the families who lost their loved ones and the tragic events that we commemorate today. It's hard to stand in this magnificent, tranquil, beautiful setting and not think back about how different things were 16 years ago to the day. Anyone who is older than, say, 21 years old remembers where they were and what they were thinking on September 11th, 2001. You all have your personal thoughts and your memories, as do I. And those of you who lost loved ones on that day have a searing pain all the more intense. On September 11th, we all fell victim to the genocidal force of our time, radical Islamic terrorism. Of course, no nation has paid a higher price in the battle against radical Islamic terrorism than the state of Israel. My grandparents, American citizens, while on American soil, mourned from a distance the terrorist attacks of 1929, which among other things, destroyed virtually the entire city of Hebron. My grandparents and my parents mourned from America the terrorist attacks of 1948, one of which occurred just the day before the State of Israel declared her independence and which caused the loss of 100 or more souls in Kfar Etzion. My grandparents, my parents, my wife and I and our siblings mourned the terrorist attacks in the 1970s and the 1980s, the murder of the Israeli Olympic team in Munich that occurred 45 years ago just this past week, as well as terrorist attacks in places like Kiryat Shmona in Ma'alot. And all of us, along with our children, my grandparents, my parents, my wife, myself, my siblings, and our children mourned, all from American soil, the terrorist attacks of the more recent past, places like Cafe Hillel in Sabaro Pizza, in Jerusalem, the Dolphinarium in Tel Aviv, Maxim's restaurant in Haifa, the Park Hotel in Netanya, and so many others. But on September 11, 2001, my grandparents and my parents and my wife and myself and our siblings and our children, Americans all, came to experience our own tragic exposure to radical Islamic terrorism, the attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon, and the downing of four commercial aircraft, all full of innocent and unsuspecting occupants and passengers. And so on September 11, 2001, instead of Americans mourning for Israel, Israel mourned for us. Israel mourned for America how the world changed that day. Israel mourned for the new reality that terrorism was no longer contained to the Middle East. It mourned the new reality that its greatest friend and closest ally had suffered in a manner that Israelis knew all too well. And it mourned the all too familiar images of victims and family members racked with pain, with grief, and with confusion. On September 11, 2001, the United States, in a very real and profound way, became the state of Israel. 
It was attacked by a hateful and barbaric enemy, obsessed by a culture of death and destruction. It became hated and hunted, as Vice President Pence says, not for what it did wrong, but for what it does right. And like the State of Israel, the United States rebuilt, recalibrated its role in the world, and set out to defeat and eradicate this evil and vile enemy. It is so right and appropriate that, apart from the United States, the only nation in the world to build a 9-11 memorial containing the name of each and every victim, each and every life that was stolen in this tragic act, is the State of Israel. On behalf of President Trump, I express my heartfelt thanks and recognition to the Jewish National Fund and Karen Kayemet Israel for this extraordinary memorial in commemoration of a day that changed the world. In the initial aftermath of September 11th, the United States, even while mourning its losses, resolved to defend our liberty and preserve our freedoms. Today, 16 years to the day from this tragic attack, we can take comfort and gain determination in the fact that the forces of decency and civility have indeed triumphed at the expense of evil and hate. The United States, Israel, and her allies have continued to grow stronger, while terrorist organizations like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Hamas continue to weaken, hopefully to the point when soon they will enter the dustbin of history. But we cannot be complacent. The battle against evil, unfortunately, never ends. As the Passover Haggadah so eloquently says, in every generation, the forces of evil arise to destroy those who wish to live in freedom. May we always be victorious. Ultimately, while in the short term we defeat these enemies on the battlefield, in the long run our victories become permanent, not by the strength of our armies, but by the strength of our values. In this regard, the United States and Israel will continue to lead the world in promoting freedom, prosperity, and tolerance. There is no better way to honor the memory of those who gave their lives to secure our future. Thank you.